some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger, Batman made his first appearance in Detective Comics number 27 in 1939. There have been many different depictions of Batman in the pages of his monthly DC comic books, various cartoon series, and a number of movie adaptations. I'm Batman. Batman's very first feature-length film was during a successful run on television in 1966. The wise decision was made to strike while the iron was hot and produce a film with the pre-established cast, sets, and props, retaining the high camp approach of the series. In Batman the movie, the dynamic duo used their high-flying heroism and groovy gadgets to declaw Catwoman, ice the Penguin, upstage the Joker, and stump the Riddler in a cheesy, camped-up 105 minutes of pure, unadulterated escapism. Batman the movie is as entertaining as its episodic weekly adventures. It's actually just an extended episode with a bigger budget. I love the ridiculousness and the bizarreness of the series and was happy to get more in the form of a feature-length film. I get a big wham, bang, pow out of watching Batman the movie. For those of you hip to the scene, sit back and enjoy the nostalgia trip. For the uninitiated... <coughs> Mad About Superheroes presents Batman the Movie, comic book movie flashback. When Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson receive word that Commodore Schmidlab is in danger aboard his yacht, they rush through stately Wayne Manor, descend down the bat poles, and into their costumes, becoming their crime-fighting alter egos, Batman and Robin. They jump into the Batmobile and speed out of the secret exit to the Batcave, to a launch pad where the Batcopter is waiting to take off. The Cape Crusaders take flight on a daring rescue mission, but the dynamic duo soon discover the Commodore's yacht is just an optical illusion. While dangling from a ladder from the Batcopter, Batman is attacked by a mechanical shark as he tries to board a yacht that isn't real. Realizing they've been set up, the Cape Crusaders rush to police headquarters to pool their resources with Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara to find out which dastardly villain in their rogues gallery is responsible for such trickery. The Cape Crusaders soon uncover a plan of world domination, but not a plan devised by a single foe, but by a dastardly quartet. Penguin, Joker, Catwoman, and Riddler, armed with a deadly dehydrator capable of turning humans into dust. They plan to put their deadly device to use against the world's leaders. It's the dynamic duo versus the deadly foursome. Outnumbered for sure, but never outclassed. While Riddler lures Batman and Robin out with his trademark riddles, Penguin tries to pull the wool over the Cape Crusader's eyes with a thinly veiled guise in order to gain access to the legendary Batcave. Catwoman infiltrates police headquarters and stately Wayne Manor, undercover as a Russian reporter, Miss Kitka. Under this guise, she begins a romance with billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne, which leaves Bruce vulnerable to a kidnap trap. Though Bruce is completely mystified by Kitka, he still manages to escape the clutches of four of his alter ego's most deadliest foes. More hijinks ensue during a battle at sea in the film's finale, culminating in the heartbreaking reveal that Miss Kitka and Catwoman are one and the same. Oh, you heartbreak! Miss Kitka! Producer William Dozier pitched a Batman movie to be released before the television series, but the powers that be shot him down, but greenlit a series. When Batman the television series was a bona fide success, Batman the movie went into production. With a script written by series writer Lorenzo Semple Jr., who went on to write the script for the 1980s Flash Gordon film with the same camp zest. The movie was directed by series director Leslie H. Martinson who would go on to direct episodes of Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Without missing a beat, Adam West and Burt Ward pick up where they left off in the series as Batman and Robin in the dynamic duo's big screen debut. West and Ward were excellently cast as the Cape Crusaders. The duo have amazing chemistry. Robin has always been a favorite superhero of mine, and that started with the Batman television series and Burt Ward's performance as the Boy Wonder. I followed Robin in the Batman DC comics and love his hero's journey. Dick Grayson transitioning into Batman's sidekick Robin, 
later becoming the leader of the Teen Titans and transitioning into the adult superhero Nightwing. Adam West is a man whose name has become synonymous with Batman and the phenomenon that is Batman. West is one of my favorite actors to have played Batman. I grew up watching reruns of the series, and as young as I was, I didn't pick up on the intended parody element of the series. To me, watching as a kid, this was the real Batman and Robin. West was truly brilliant in the role that would become known as the Bright Knight. A big part of the fun and success of the series was the revolving door of established talent that would frequent the series from episode to episode that were cast as villains. Vincent Price as Egghead, David Wayne as Mad Hatter, and Rowdy McDowell as the Bookworm. But the film utilizes the creme de la creme in Batman's rogues gallery, brought to life by the creme de la creme of thespians of the era. Cesar Romero is great as the clown prince of crime, the Joker. However, he's sadly underused and reduced to lackey status as he brings Commodore Schmidlab his tea and takes orders from the Riddler and the Penguin, and doesn't really contribute much to the villainous plan to kill Batman and Robin and take over the world. But as the Penguin declares to the Clown Prince of Crime in the film, On land you may command, but at sea it is me! <laughs> Though Joker's Batman's greatest villain in the DC comic books, in the movie it's definitely the Riddler played exceptionally well by Frank Gorshin. He clearly had a lot of fun playing this part. His exuberance and comedic flair shine through pitch perfect in his portrayal of the Riddler. As he twirls his umbrella and waddles around squawking his lines, Burgess Meredith gives a standout performance as Penguin. While the aforementioned actors all reprise their roles from the television series, because of other commitments, the sultry Julie Newmar, who played Catwoman, was unable to reprise her role, and the part was recast with the beautifully talented Lee Merriweather, who perfectly picks up the part. Decades later, in more recent years, two straight-to-video animated films were produced, Batman Return of the Cape Crusader and Batman Two-Face. The film continues the adventures of the dynamic duo from the 66 series, and Adam West, Burt Ward, and Julie Newmar reprise their roles, voicing their animated counterparts. William Shatner provides the voice of Two-Face. Shatner was supposed to play the role of Two-Face in the original 66 series, but the show was canceled before he got the chance. A monthly DC comic series was also produced back in 2012, titled Batman 66. Featuring the talents of writer Jeff Parker and artist Jonathan Chase, Ty Templeton, and many more. The Batman 66 television series was in syndicated reruns for decades. When they eventually stopped airing, that was it. The original 66 series wasn't available on home video until more recent years. All we were able to get our hands on to get our Adam West, Burt Ward, Batman and Robin fix was the 1966 Batman the movie. I brought the VHS tape back in 1990 when they released it to capitalize on the huge blockbuster success of the Batman 89 movie. And I watched Batman the movie just as much as Batman 89. Growing up watching both, the difference in tone doesn't bother me like it may bother others. As mentioned, Batman has been around since the 1930s, seeing many different interpretations. For better or worse, it's all part of the continued success and longevity of the character. It also provides plenty of options, depending on your mood, bright and campy or dark and brooding. Batman the movie has everything I love from the series turned up to 11. These go to 11. Batman the movie will always rate as one of my favorite Batman films of all time, along with Batman 89 and Batman Mask of the Phantasm. I hope you've enjoyed this comic book movie flashback. Thanks for letting your geek flag fly with Mad About Superheroes. Don't forget to like and share this video, visit my homepage for more content, and please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section.